Hello and welcome to my Code TV series. I'm Dr. Michaela and today I want to talk with you about how to agree on a coding standard and on best practices. A clear code review strategy and very clear and sensible guidelines and coding standards go a long way for your code review practices in your team and in your organization. Code reviews really offer a lot of benefits. It starts from detecting bugs, improving the code quality, but also collaboration, right? Learning and mentoring, informing, knowledge sharing, awareness, all of those are benefits that are coming along with the code review practices in your team. But code reviews, and I worked with a lot of different teams, code reviews also have a lot of drawbacks. And some of the teams, they are experiencing a lot of those drawbacks. In the worst case scenario, code reviews can slow down a, a team's productivity, drastically slow down a team's productivity and only yield to questionable or mediocre feedback quality. But it doesn't have to be that way. I've worked with many product teams around the world, uh, for example, with Office, with Windows, with Exchange, um, with Visual Studio and many, many others on their code review practices. I've done several large scale studies and I have a very clear picture of what works for teams for their code review practices. And one of the small things, but it's a, it's a cornerstone, is to have a clear coding standard, to have clear guidelines around best practices. And um, those well-defined guidelines, they are essential because they will counteract those endless unproductive discussions that you could have in code reviews otherwise. Right. So today I want to share with you how to agree on a coding standard, how to agree on best practices and um, guidelines for your code reviews. So now you say, but Michaela, it's impossible. We tried it. We had this idea of having one uh, guideline, one uh, clear standard, but nobody agrees. Everybody thinks his or her opinion is the best and it's really opinionated. There is no correct answer, so, so we gave up. There is no right way. And if you say that, I agree, yeah. And, and I also think that it's really good that you realize that this is one of the biggest problems. But by not having a coding standard, you're not solving that problem and you're not mitigating it. The only thing that you're doing is you're deferring this discussion into the code reviews and it's coming up over and over and over again. So yes, Coding standards are mostly opinionated. They are subjective in nature. There is no right and wrong answer, but it's, it's important to make a decision. You know, what's wrong is not to make a decision, not to say, oh, this is how we are doing it here and not to have a consistent style because this means that in each code review, people will argue over little things, will argue about opinionated choices that they can make. And so this really drags your productivity down and also drags down the team morale. So how do we do it? Well, there are probably 10,000 ways that you could come up with a coding standards that you could design your agreement process, but I will show you one that I find very, very effective and it works for many of my clients. There are different ones that I might uh, show in different videos. So it's a six step process and we will use the DAISY decision uh, making framework. That's a very well established uh, framework that's used by, by many different companies around the world. And I find it very, very powerful. So what's the first step? The first step is to start with an already existing coding standard. So either you have already your own coding standard that you want to revise and rework, or if you don't have one, don't start making one from scratch. Um, go and look on the internet, for example, for different coding standards. There are really nice ones out there, for example, from Google again. If you, if you Google, you find a GitHub repository with different coding styles per language, per framework, which is very good. I will also link that down there. Or you can, for example, look for best practices. And so I would go and collect basis of that and start off with with that as the basis. You don't have to, you know, research really the best options is, is enough if there are the points are there. Step two is building a decision making team. Yes, DAISY is all around having a decision making team. So the really powerful thing for DAISY is that you have very clear responsibilities and very clear roles for each of the team members. And DAISY is actually, the, it stands, the acronym stands for each of the roles. The D is for driver. So 
I assume that's you because you are the one that's interested in that one. And the driver is more or less the project manager for your little project. And your project here is uh, making a coding standard and a best practice guideline, right? So the driver is the one that will initiate the meetings, that uh, assigns also the roles, that informs everybody. So really the driver of the project and that everybody knows, is it on track or do you have to you know, do something and things like that. And then we have the A uh, for Daisy and that's the approver. And this is really important, it's only one person. Um, don't assign several people to that role. There shouldn't be, it's not, a, the decision making is made as a group, but the real decision, the final decision is done by one person. And that's really important. That's the power behind Daisy. Otherwise it's again, a very long process to um, agree. So you have to decide who's that person that has the final say and um, that you all then obey to. And then you have also the contributors and those are, I think, the backbone of this model. The contributors are contributing their opinion. They uh, express, you know, different pros and cons, for example. So you have to select compassionate, uh, passionate contributors that are really eager, that are opinionated, um, so that they really have a say there. Don't, you know, sometimes I feel people aren't afraid to actually involve those opinionated people. They have a say there, but they're not making the decision, right? So those are the ones that are actually doing the work as well. So they will go through the document that you just prepared and then they will say um, why they're agreeing or not agreeing on the different points. Finally, you have the E for or the I in, in English, the I for informants and the informants on the, a list of people that you will then inform about the outcome of your decision making process. So they are not really actively contributing, they are not um, weighing in, they don't have you know a voice really, but they are informed. So once the coding standard is defined, you will let them know about the outcome and then they can, um, they can just work with the coding standard. So what's step number three now? Step number three is where you go through that initial document and you just mark what needs to be revised to it. But uh, be aware that this is not a discussion. So we are not discussing whether or not something is good or bad or uh, you know right or wrong. We're just saying, do we all agree? So you can do that in a meeting, for example, where the driver again organizes and facilitates the meeting, or you could also just send around the document. And the important thing is that for each of the points in the coding standards, you will make a decision. And the decision, um, there are three choices, right? One is remove that point, right? So if everybody agrees that we should remove that point, we remove it. If everybody agrees that we keep that point, we keep it. And if we can't decide, or if we think there should be an alternative wording or a different alternative um, solution for that point, then we mark it as revised. And those revised points are the ones that we will go over again in the next step. So let's give uh, you an example. So one of the code coding standard points could be always declare local variables. And so then in the meeting, for example, you would just say, so who is um, uh, in favor of removing that point and then see how many hands are going up. If all are going up, we remove it. Who is in favor to keep that point? Again, are all hands going up? We keep it. Or uh, should we revise it? Then, you know, you mark it as revise and in the next step, we will discuss that again. So what's the next step? The next step is step number four. It's collecting the opinions. So this is where the co contributors really um, have their voice. So now that you have this you know, list of points to revise, you can send it around and I have a, 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 I have a nice template down there that you can download how that looks like. So on one hand, you have the, the points that are in the coding standard. On the other hand, you have just some space that people can express their opinion. They can say why they are in favor of it or why they are against it. They can present different solutions, different alternatives. And then contributors can also be supporters of, of one of the solutions. So for example, if you have like, again, this idea of um, always declare a local variable, somebody could be against it and then they lay out why they are against it and what they think should happen. And then other contributors can again say, oh, I'm in support of that alternative solution or I'm against it. So um, I will also show it here in the video how that looks like. And uh, down there you can download it and use it for your own. It's important here that this doesn't go on forever, right? So um, make a, a sensible timeline. Maybe it's a couple of days, maybe it's a week. I would say it's max two weeks 
if nobody has contributed or hasn't contributed enough at that point, it probably wasn't that important. So have a time frame and say, after that, no, uh, no contributions allowed anymore. It's, it's final. That's the input that we got. And from that, we organize another meeting or maybe it's your first meeting. We organize another meeting and that's the group discussion meeting. So uh, that's step five. So everybody comes together. Now the approval is also in the list. So they, there are the approvers, the contributors and obviously the driver who is the facilitator of the meeting. And now in this meeting, it's really important that you keep it civilized and to the point. The point is not really to have a discussion or an argument about whether something is right or wrong, but just to go through the document that you collected and you're outlining the, the opinion. So everybody gets some assigned time, let's say five minutes per point that we are going through, and then they can lay out their arguments and then the other side can lay out their arguments and that's it, there's no discussion and you don't have to decide whether something is right or wrong. So the approver then gets all this information and lets it sink in. So it's also important that you don't make the decision in the meeting. The meeting is just to inform the approver of all the different uh, options that she or he has. And then we are going to step six and that's the final decision. And the final decision, the final say, has only one person. So that person now equipped with all the information. Yeah, maybe they also, they could clarify some of the questions that they had in this previous meeting. Um, they will now make a decision. And so this person will make, without the pressure of the, the group meeting, without the pressure of the contributors there, will make their decision on their own based on the, the input that they provided. And then that's it. That's your coding standard. And it will not be the correct one. It will not be the optimal one, but it will be one and it will be a, a clear decision what's going to happen. This reduces the time, it reduces the discussion, the unproductive discussions in the code review. But also another side effect is that we are getting consistency in our code base. And this means that people, for example, from other teams or our newcomers, they can easier contribute to different code parts. For example, Google does that a lot. They have very clear guidelines, they have very clear uh, coding standards, but this also means that you can easily move from team to team because you know if you are knowing how to work in that code base, you know also how to work in the other code base. So now we think, well, now do we keep that standard forever? No, 10 years later, you probably uh, need to revise it in between, but don't revise it on an ongoing basis. Let's have some schedule for that. Maybe, you know, whatever makes sense for your organization again, but let's say every six months maybe is a good uh, time frame. And after six months, you're going over that coding standard again, maybe with the same process, you're revising it again. So I really hope you liked it. Maybe let me just summarize what I told you. It's my six step process. You're starting with an initial document. It's either your coding standard that you already have or something that you just copy based out from the internet. Don't think too much about it. It's really important that you just have a framework there. And then in the next step, you're assigning the role. So you have to assign driver, the approver, the contributors, and also the informant. Then you're going through the document and just mark which of the points are actually up for discussion. And then you're sending around the document with all the discussion points. People can make their input. You have one organized, really organized and very time boxed meeting where you, everybody can present their arguments, but there is no discussion, no fight about the right or wrong in the meeting. And then finally the approver will make a decision and everybody has to follow. So I really hope that you liked my video. I really hope that you get something out of it. If you um, have a different process, leave a comment below. If you like it, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're doing. Also, it's a good time to now like my video if you liked it and also subscribe to my channel. And what's also important, I'm giving code review workshops. So if you're interested in working with me about your code review strategies, for example, go have a look at michaelagreiler.com slash workshops. I also link it down there so you can just click the button, click the link and then have a look. For example, one of my uh, workshops, it's called an impactful code review strategy and um, we are going really into the nitty gritty of that. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Otherwise, I hope you really enjoyed that video. There will be more uh, coming up. So yeah, I hope to see you. Bye bye. Did you know that I write a code review book? 
You can become one of my early readers and get access to my draft chapters and bonus material. Go to michaelagreiler.com book and add yourself to the early reader group.